Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Game of Thrones. No, I'm kidding. Welcome to a podcast, Orange, everybody. I am your host, Tom Crescenzo. Joining me, as always, is my host, Walter White. How you doing, Walt? Game of Thrones. More like Gay of Thrones. Oh! Yeah, TV, Mr. White! Two TV show references in and the one. first 15 seconds. seconds of the show. Killing it already. I know. How, How many... are you guys doing? Good to be here. Podcast Orange, Jack Siegel, what's up? How many more references can we fit in? We'll try. I don't that. know, man. Uh, I usually go for like at least fifteen movie references and episodes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're at like three now. So, um, do you have one? Uh well, you know what? Um, uh, airplane. Just, just the airplane. Title, just the title of the movie. <laughs> that's not a reference. That's like, <laughs> that's like me. That's like imagine if you watched Family Guy and like Peter was just like Star Wars. Like, uh, well, sometimes they'll do it like a. They had like a reference to planes, trains, and automobiles in one episode, and then Chris was like, ha, 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 movie references. Yeah, but they still reference. <laughs> no, they still it. Like, you know, like it's yeah. not. Like, they didn't just say the title. <laughs> of the they, movie. They, just, they didn't just say like Peter didn't just say planes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> like but that'd like, be I, funny if it did work like that. Like if so- every time South Park referenced something, they were just like, oh my god. The Shining! And, like, everyone was just like, South Park is one of the greatest shows of all time. It's genius art. It's satire. (laughs) It's amazing. It's subversive. I mean, really, like, that's all references are at the end of the day. Like, when you boil down to it, you're just pointing out that a greater form of art exists than the one you're currently making. Well, some satire is clever, though, because it makes... I mean, some satire is brilliant. Like, I always think of, like, Young Frankenstein... Or I'm like, not saying satire, I'm saying references. Oh, references. Okay, because yeah. I was thinking... Wait, did like, I say satire? Well, at first we were like satire, but like... Well, I mean, you know, like it's the... Sat- some satirical I, movies are great, but then... Well, it's like, not... Because I, I was more just saying that's really what references oh, are. Oh, yeah, like, just like when it's like when you when you when you reference something, like, you know, people always say like, oh, this is so clever... Yeah. This is still like oh I'm ahead of the curve or like you know this is still like cutting edge and like in tune with the times but like really what you're saying is like hey guys remember that movie yeah and everyone's just like yeah I remember that movie like and like I love Family Guy but that's ninety percent of the show well and also I think it depends on the subtlety of it and how it fits into the show like there was one episode of Seinfeld where they um. Jerry and his girlfriend made out while watching Schindler's List in the theaters, and then the the you seen the movie, right? Okay. Schindler's List, yeah, yeah, of course. So okay. funniest movie I've ever seen. Yeah, no, it's greatest hilarious. comedy of all time. But at the end of the episode, dude, Seth Rogen in that movie. Oh my god, when he smoked, like, dude, when he smokes that joint with Hitler, <laughs> like, yo, Schindler, you want some of this? Man? <laughs> <laughs> and then James Franco's just like trying to feel up Ava Braun. She's like, stop it, James. <laughs> Ava Braun, I'm gonna get you to fuck me. It's a terrible James Franco. Yeah, it's a, I, but like, I, I okay, like, so the end of the episode, though, they end up like he ends up referencing the the last scene in the movie in a way that's like really clever and unexpected. But then some of it's just like obvious references. Like, you ever watch those fucking like date movie or epic movie or those? Yeah, fucking, those movies suck balls. And literally, the whole joke is ha. Iron Man, ha! Kung Fu Panda, ha! (laughs) Cloverfield. I remember the first time I saw Epic Movie, like, I had, you know, I was at a certain age where I still found, like, the, and I still do appreciate the old scary movies, at least. Yeah. But, like, you know, I was coming off an age where I thought that shit was the best. And, like, I remember sitting down to watch Epic Movie, just think, like, this is gonna be so funny! And then, like, I'm with a bunch of friends, we're like, yo! And then, like, it gets to the end, we were just like, what the fuck was that? That was retarded. That was horrible, like... That was irritating. Like I'm fucking, well, at least I'm aggravated. Movie. I wanna, I wanna like not unwatch this. I wanna like, punch this movie. Yeah, in I the wanna, face. I wanna rip this movie's balls off so I can't have any kids. <laughs> like I want, I wanna prevent that. It ends with it, Borat. Like that's the yeah. thing. It's literally just like, oh, and Borat's in it. It's yes, like, get it? Because cool. Borat's a thing that yeah. people know. Isn't that funny? Do you guys remember like, that? A th- remember that movie that came out three months ago? Well, yeah. here it is. <laughs> yeah, now right. it's in our movie. And it's like, at least, see, I think the difference is, like, Scary Movie, 
had jokes and it wasn't like it was a scary movie with some brilliant satire but at least that made an attempt to make like yeah. jokes about the subject matter right and scary movie also had at least the first two had the personality of the Wayne's you know the um the, the Wayne the brother. Wayne's brothers behind it and you know they they definitely added a lot of character to yeah. those movies i still think 3 and 4 are good Oh, but yeah, they're no, definitely I, not the same as those. I actually first think two. three is the best one. A lot of people act. say that. I I would give it to one still. No, and I also I like two a little more than three. Two is really funny to me. Three, see, I like three and four because three, scary movie three. They added the Zucker brothers to the writers, the guys who wrote Airplane. Yeah, and they, so yeah. it's like there's one scene when like Charlie Sheen in Scary Movie three, he uh, they're referencing signs. And, like, his wife is in the car accident, and she's like, please, I don't want you to have any more kids. No, I, she's like, I don't oh, want yeah, you to she's marry like, any, no more, she's no more like, sex. She's like, please don't remarry. He's like, of course. And then she's like, like and I, no sex either. And he's like, like, I can't uh, understand what you're saying. I didn't saying. catch that. Baby, you're not making sense. Yeah, that's, that's funny. <laughs> no, that, 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 was, that was classic. That's comedy right yeah, there. Yeah, that comedy. No, but it's epic, dude. Epic movie is literally, and most of those movies aren't even epic See, movies. This is the thing. Talladega like, Nights. Yeah, it's not, right? a, it's not an epic movie. That's I remember comedy. there's one scene like they reference in that movie where like they reference Kanye saying like George Bush doesn't care about black, but they just got some black guy to say it. Yeah, and it was just like, and then they, like the female character just like, ooh, that sounds bad. And I was just like, even at that age, I was like, what the fuck, like. And also, you could have easily gotten Kanye to do that. And yeah, you could have got Kanye in the movie. Kanye probably read the script and he's like, "Fuck this trash! Like this is ass! Like part of the shit." I mean, like, why would he? But um, yeah, it, it kind of connects to um this thing that like, because you know you had movies like Airplane in the eighties, and then the Naked Gun movies that were hits. Yeah. And you know, Naked Gun started to get very ridiculous with the later ones, but. I think Naked what's scary, you know, and a half. those like, yeah, like those types of spoofs got really big in the 80s and 90s. And then they and died And the Mel off. Brooks stuff was yeah, great. The I, Mel love, I love stuff. Mel Brooks movies. Yeah, yeah, and all that died off. And then like when Scary Movie came out, it was just like that shit's back. But it was almost different. Like they, they had a different approach. It was more like just like the jokes were all very obvious. Yeah. And like very like, you know, it was goofy. It was almost cartoony, but still very inappropriate. Like. Yeah. All you know, like Shorty's, like you know, they like there's a scene where Shorty gets shot, mm-hmm. and there's like smoke coming out of his lung, and he's like trying to hit it. He's like, "Sydney, you, you hit this shit!" <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah, it's hilarious, but it's like that that brought it back, mm-hmm. and then all these other directors were like, they just decided, you know, that like good the good comedy writing, let's forget all of that and just take the obvious jokes. And add way more references. Well, it was two. It was two people in particular. Their names are Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer. And you know they, a lot about this. I'm a. I'm kind of a movie. <laughs> I'm kind of a movie buff. You're like, all right. So, in chapter three, the history of terrible spoofs. <laughs> but they they are like two of the writers of like one of the first scary movies, and then they made Date Movie, and then Epic Movie, and then Meet the Spartans and Disaster Movie. And eventually, oh, meet the Spartans. I find that movie fun, but that movie's horrible. I didn't even see that. That movie's ho- it's bad, but like I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Epic Movie. Like I, I saw it in theaters with friends, and we were just like, it was just like we were like thirteen. It's like it's like it's so stupid. Yeah, funny. it was so stupid. Your, your your middle school brain just eats it the fuck up. Like yeah. they had like an American Idol ref. Like there was an American Idol oh, scene. Like, yeah, it's where just Simon like, Cowell. Gets like kicked off. Yeah, by, he gets kicked into the pit of death by Leonidas's or the spoof character. That, that's how you know anything that took place in the mid two thousands when they have an American Idol reference. Yeah, right. Like, it's the most mid two thousands shit. Like it really, honestly, the like American Idol kind of summarizes the mid two thousands in a good way. Yeah. Like it's just this like like <clears throat> here's how we can take talented artists and just whittle them down to the most generic, the boring like. Yeah, like literally like crowd rules. friendly like yeah well i mean american idol i'm thinking like all those reality shows like survivor the bachelor like what's that one with fucking howie mandel it's not even a reality show oh that's um well that's deal or no deal, yeah, deal or no that's, that's a, a game, game show. show yeah true. that's different like that's i think different. yeah with the the re- those types of reality shows specifically american Idol, like all these sh- like reality Dancing shows that came stars. out yeah like all these shows that came out that were sort of like based on a merit system it was like you know, you get voted for, and then you, like, win, like, if you're, like, yeah. good enough. But it's, like, the good is only, like, 
Like, there was a lot of singers on American Idol who were really talented who didn't make it because, like, the judges probably just didn't think they could ever sell a record. Or they're not, like, like unique. And, like, usually, I mean, they really care about ratings, you know? Yeah. So, but, like, I mean, that whole thing, that started in the I, either the 90s or the 80s with a show called Star Search. True. And I now, mean, yeah, that's how people forget. That's where fucking What's-His-Face got found, Carlos Mencia. Like one star search. <laughs> People are like, he's Mexican. He's got Get him an Asian right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, that's that's where like that shit started. And then yeah, in two thousands, American Idol was like a humongous hit. It was like the most what like it was just a ju- everybody watched that shit. So then they tried to do like that with every type of show. There was like yeah. Dancing with the Stars. There was last comic standing. That show is like it's funny because I've watched that show and enjoyed it. And I never seen it. people a lot. Well, people forget that a lot of the comics who are big now went on Last Comic Standing. Well, didn't like Bert, Amy Schumer was on there? I believe so. Bert Kreischer was on Last Comic Standing. He um, was a contestant. He wasn't one of the people that I don't. Versed. I don't think he like yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know if he won or anything. But um, Josh Blue won. Um, I think oh, the yeah. two thousand four one. He's the comedian with um cerebral palsy. He's really right, good right. actually. Um, and then um. Greg Giraldo was the judge once, like one year, for, yeah. for the last season, and um, I think Rich Voss went and like lost. <laughs> yeah, the first season, and then the next, and the next year, everybody was just ripping on Rich Voss. Yeah, they were just losing. shitting on. They're like, "Why would you do that to yourself?" Why they lost? I remember at the roast of Patrice, Bill Burr was like going in on Rich Voss because he lost to like some open, comic. just a bunch of open mics. So this comic, this comics, like this Asian comics name was like fuck men or some shit like that faux men or whatever the oh f- i know he's he's actually a known comic i forgot what his you know name what his is. name he was like around for 15 minutes and then he was on an episode of tough crowd with colin quinn where yeah Patrice just went in on the guy yes i've seen that's a great at what's that his name the fuck, fucking i can't think of his name Oh, well. Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh. New Engine Vine. But before, I just wanted to say, though, in terms of satire, I would consider the last brilliant satire. I would consider them as up there with, like, the airplane and the Mel Brooks show was Austin Powers. But these aren't really, like, satires. Austin like, Powers is a satire. Well, Austin Powers, yeah, but this is more like kind of a... Like, people call it satire. I feel like it's more spoof. Like, to, satire is kind of, like, aggressive to me. Like, these are just, like... These movies are more like you could definitely Austin Powers. You could say is a satire well, of like it's, spe- it's a specific action movies. Well, it's James Bond. I think I might be being too narrow with my definition. I always saw satire as just kind of like something like South Park or something like that. Like not just South Park, but really just something that like satirizes like a specific topic. Okay. Or like a subject. Like these movies are kind of like spoofing genres. Yeah, but that's what it's okay. So it's I, almost like I, yes, it's satire, but you could call it parody. It's like well, that's the thing, satire and parody. I always kind of use interchangeably with each maybe other. Maybe they are, but I, it's different. Like satire is like kind of like I don't know. It's hard to define. I think sat, to to me at least, satire comes off as more calculated and more like. Maybe, yeah, I don't want to say aggressive because it's not always angry, but, you know, it's definitely not always, like, oh, like, you know, like... It's talking about current events. Yeah, and it's sometimes it's trying to expose things. Like, a lot of times, Saturday is funny, but it's trying to, like, expose things. I guess Borat would be a satirical documentary. No, yeah, Borat is highly satirical of, like... With with, Yeah, of, of, of just the way the Americans view foreigners, but... With something like Austin Powers, like you could argue that it satirizes certain things about the culture of the the time, but it does, to me, it's sort of movies. yeah. But to me, it's almost just sort of a parody of like these '60s action stars that were just well, it's ridiculous. James Bond. Yeah. yeah, but it's also it's a parody. That's yeah. a, like you could define Austin Powers as a parody of James Bond. Like, but it also parodies like like the Michael Caine British movies of the 60s. That's why I like that whole groovy shit. Yeah. Like if you watch like the old Ita- the Italian job movie, you're like, it seems like he's like, yeah, babe. He, like he literally <laughs> is Austin Powers. Yeah, baby. And that's why like it was funny when he plays his dad. Could you imagine if you walked into like, you were like an actress, you're like 19. It's like your first big role. You're sitting on the casting couch. And then Austin Powers just walks out and he's just like, yeah, baby. So you want the role. 
And then a fat bastard comes up. <laughs> but Austin Powers, he's I just really like trying. He's like, you're gonna have to shag you. <laughs> your name, your name is uh, some some sort of like sex Ivana Blow Me or something. Ivana Blow Me. <laughs> but that's like I, I rewatched the Spy Who Shagged Me, the second one, like month a few months ago, and uh, that's like a brilliant because I I was like that's what like has like jokes about like sp- about like. You know the genre, and I'm like, that's what a spoof is. It's yeah. like it plays on the yeah. conventions of the genre. You could also say that bl- the Blues Brothers is a spoof in a way, even though they're not really spoofing yeah. anything specific. It just sort of parodies like the over the top action film, like yeah, like that just shows like these two guys doing and in- getting away with inexplicable things that make no sense, and these car chases that literally pile up it like ridiculously, oh, yeah. like. One of my favorite things about the Blues Brothers, like sometimes I don't even need to watch the movie; I just watch the car chase scenes because it's like they're just fucking crazy. Like, or that when they're in the car and they're like, "It's dark out and we're wearing sunglasses." You know, they're just yeah, they yeah, no, they parody that. And they they just like they perfectly lampoon all of those like classic cliches, the tropes, yeah, you know? all those things that people love about movies but know are overplayed, but. With satire, I think it's like, like I watched this movie the other night called The Holy Mountain, which oh, is wow. a fucking insane movie. You yeah. sh- if you, if you have like, you know, if you can stomach it, you should watch it. But like, and I can't explain what it's about. right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. It's a crazy ass movie. I haven't seen it's, that one. It's, it's nuts. It's one of the craziest films I've ever seen. But, um, I couldn't go into what it's about right now because we don't have six hours. But there's like a there's a scene where there's like they're just satirizing like kind of like American like sort of imperialism in a way, and they're showing this character that like is like the CEO of a company that makes what she calls war toys, and she's like, "We make and sell war toys," and like there's like it's just it's like per, like we need help in those miniature plastic bomb shop. We need help in the miniature plastic bomb shot that's funny and it's like that's like satire yeah. to me is like the like and like really nail biting you're and making like, fun of the she government. goes like what we do is like we use our computer systems to predict <clears throat> what countries the u.s might go to war with mm-hmm. and then we design our war toys based on the enemy we create brown vampires and we call them persians and then like this and that and it's like you watch it you're like this is fucked up and you're laughing but like you're knowing the real life implications like that's, that's what, what makes sat- it funnier. Yeah. yeah, that's what makes it funnier. But that's to me, that's satire. Okay, like that's satire, like that nail biting accuracy of like picking out those things and like making a joke about it, but also like showing how fucked up in real it is. See, that's in that vein. Then I would also say that the Monty Python films are satire. Because the Holy Grail is specifically yeah. satirizing the British Empire. Well, yeah, that, yes. And Life of Brian is yeah. very much satirizing well, yes, I don't think it always has to be aggressive. Like, the Monty, Pi- Monty Python movies are just, like, brilliant in and of themselves. Oh, yeah, but like, it's also, some of the humor is very, like, biting in the way that, like, especially, like, the Holy Grail, a lot of it makes fun of England yeah. and, like, the, the pomposity of the British Empire. And then Life of Brian is very much making fun of Christianity. In like a way mm. that when it came out in 1979, people were pissed off because it's. Just, I want. I love the life of Brian. I need to watch that movie again. And it's and it's interesting because I, I I love both of those movies, and I'm trying to think of which one I like more. But I honestly, I, it might be Life of Brian. Even it's though been a while. I haven't. I've I've watched the Holy Grail recently, and I still love it. Oh but, yeah, they're both perfect films. Yeah. It's it's yeah those those are just timeless. All right, we've been nerding Why, out for twenty yeah. minutes now. Well, it's good because it's not like we have anything more, uh, else to talk about. I mean, we have like a couple things we could go. There's into. nothing really that happened in the news recently. I mean, you know, like we could talk about some shit, like fucking um, for example, the fact that the Kanye won the presidency. Oh, Kanye, 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 Kanye. Yeah, point two percent of the overall yeah, popular yeah. vote in Vermont. Really? That was more than I expected. Anything? Yo, he's at, he's like on stage. He's like, Yo, shouts out Vermont, y'all's my people. He's whispering as he's like, what? <laughs> I didn't. Oh, what the fuck's going on right now? <laughs> no, we have a new president. We do. Joe Biden. Joseph Biden has won the presidency fair and fucking square. Yeah. And that's it. Joseph Robinette Biden. Jr. And this is one's crazy because it's like, 
it's weird to say that this is the first pre like presidential election in like almost like over a decade now that didn't end with the popular vote and the electoral college being unequal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in this case, like with Hillary, it was like, well, she won the popular vote, but Trump won the college. But then it's like with this one, it's like not pretty fucking clearly. Like, Trump won Trump, Trump University College. Yeah, like <laughs> this one, like Trump pretty much won QAnon, Trump the Daily yeah. Stormer, and maybe Trump lost like, both. The last time that happened was, um, well, actually, no, the last did, time it happened, happened with Obama. I think yeah, that's no, why it didn't, Obama. Yeah, but then like I, it didn't happen with um. It was. It might have happened with Bush and Kerry. You'd have to fact check. Me. I think Bush, but won it did both. not happen. With Bush and Gore. Gore, yeah. And in fact, probably shouldn't have even, he probably shouldn't have even got the college that time. But Biden, a... Biden, the thing about it is Biden won. And if you're one of those people that's like, and I know none of those people are listening to this podcast right now, <laughs> because the only people that listen to this podcast are people with brains. Like oh, how, like geniuses. Like how I'm blowing, blowing my own demographics here that watch this. <laughs> and have really big yeah, right. You, and, you, I know you have friends who probably are somewhat Republican, too. It's like, <laughs> well, they are, but they're, they, they admit they live in reality. They're like, listen, Jack, I know I'm a complete fucking retard. And you're like, yeah, thank you. Good thing you finally figured it out. <laughs> no, they, but kidding, no, they Jack's live friends. in reality. Yeah. They live in reality. The reality is that Joe Biden is the next president. Some people, and you know what's interesting, right? So there's obviously the five stages of grief. That we all know about. There's Just to let you guys know, Jack snorted five lines of cocaine in celebration before the podcast. I, so, so that's five stages of grief. And <laughs> no, I did get high earlier off laughing gas at the dentist. No, clapping up for nitrous oxide. I, love, that's I hear Biden's going to make it legal. That's who Your we're sponsored counted. by. No, it's nitrous, not even a specific brand. Just the yeah, whole, we're just sponsored by nitrous oxide. The whole dr just a chemical is what we're sponsored by. <laughs> um, but there's the five stages of grief, right? There's denial, uh, anger, depression, bargaining, acceptance. And if you look at a different Trump supporter, they really are on each one. They're all on a different stage of grief right now. A lot of them are still in the denial stages. They're still like, well, you know, we don't know, the voter fraud, all this stuff. Some of them <laughs> I saw are in acceptance. They're just like, well, you know, fuck it, what are you going to do? Some of them are just angry. Yeah, and, I uh, mean, like, I was, like, talking to a Trump supporter, and, like, some of them are, it's, like, half denial, half acceptance. It's weird. Like, they never, they never passed denial, but then they got past the other stages of grief while holding on to, like, here's what happened. I was talking to them. And I was like, because here's the truth. I don't love Joe Biden. Like, I'm I'm relieved that Trump is not in office. But, like, I'm not, like, thrilled. But, like, you know, so, I, you know, I was just trying to, like, because it's, you know, it's someone I care about. I was trying to make him feel better. I was like, you know, like, like I'm not thrilled either. And they were just like, yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, they cheated. So, whatever. Like, And I was like, <laughs> it's like, I guess you're accepting it, but not really. you're not really accepting the facts. Like, I mean... It, it, it's also like just that's like, the thing. It's like denial acceptance. It's like I'll deny that it was fair, even though it was, even yeah. though I have no evidence. No, but evidence. I'll accept that there's no possible Th chance because is, I have no evidence. There like, is no evidence, man. I've asked people all week. I've just been a, a, an internet troll on Facebook and everything. <laughs> and I've asked Jack has been masturbating while scrolling social media for the past oh, week yeah. since this happened. Well I've I've posted a <laughs> meme that really described how it was with Cartman <laughs> licking the tears off. Yeah. Of yeah, that was great. And I was just like that's really how I've been because I was just like if, if you're gonna say something like there's voter fraud and then to be able to like I was like we'll provide some evidence. And either they just go dark or they say, well you know, look at all these. Somebody was like, um, "Well, in Wisconsin, you know, it was the all the mail-in ballots. the The votes were fifty fifty for both of them. But then overnight, all those mail-in ballots went in for Biden, not Trump. And I'm like, yeah, but people have been predicting that would happen for months. Yeah, they're basically saying, yeah, and then all those people who mailed in didn't vote for him. It's like yeah, we know that's, that's why he point. won. Like, because yeah, they're like, isn't it weird? Like. Like my like my fan one of my family members made this argument. They're like, isn't it weird that when they stopped counting overnight, suddenly like a hundred thousand mail in voted ballots show up no, and they're all for weird. Biden? It's like it's not weird at all. Trump told his supporters not to, not to mail their yeah. votes. How so you, yeah. of course there's none. Like 
How I mean, you say that don't vote by mail, and then when people vote by mail, you're when people listen to you and not vote by because they listen to him and do whatever he tells them to. Exactly. And so it's like when you when you tell them not to vote by mail, how could you be surprised if they don't vote by? It's just every like, single person I know who voted early was like, and I don't know for sure, but just based on how well I know them, they were definitely like going Biden. It's like yeah. the fact is like. The reason the mail in Bidens, the the mail in Bidens, <laughs> the mail in the reason the mail in Bidens can't no because the reason all those mail in ballots were so overwhelmingly for Biden is because Biden supporters were told to do that, but even if they didn't want to do that, they were still going to vote for him. So yeah. Biden literally had bodies on both sides of the line, like on the day of in the bo- booths, in person, early voting and mail in, like. Trump yeah. didn't have the mail-in or the early shit. He only had basically in-person day of voters. And it's like, yeah, he got, I mean, he got a lot of people. He got 75 million about, but. And all these conspiracy theories where it's like, well, you know, uh, they're like, how come some of these ballots were thrown out or uh, all these things, all these talking. If you're like somebody from 1789 voted. Yeah, all these it's dead like, people voted. What? All this, all this bullshit. Based on what? Like <laughs> it's all been credibly debunked, and it's just like, like I heard. You're just a I heard John Adams voted. How is that possible? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Excuse Sally, me, Jack. Could you explain to me how Abraham Lincoln voted for Joe Biden? Sally in the 2020 Hemings election? voted for Biden, but Thomas Jefferson Excuse voted me, for Jack. Trump. I find it kind of odd that Kurt Cobain casted a vote for Donald Trump. That's weird. Well, Kurt Cobain's like, still well, alive. Okay, you know that. Yeah, it's uh, like, well, he. It's like, it's like, what about Tupac's vote for Biden? It's like, yeah, well, yeah, Tupac's chilling somewhere. I've like, seen photos of him. Yeah, but uh, dude, it's like, but. Here's the thing is that the only reason they believe that shit, I know we've been over this, is because Trump said it. It's not like yeah. somebody was like, like, look, went on the internet and was like, let's find out about this. And then they came to this conclusion by themselves. No, they just blindly repeat anything this guy says. You're in a fucking cult, yeah. you morons. Yeah. You're dumb. It's time, you're, to, it's time to face it. Like, you're, you're just so... Dumb. It's just I have no respect for these people like, whatsoever. <laughs> like here's the thing, like you vote for who you want, but like at this point, like if you're still on the whole voter fraud, like Trump deserved to win thing, like please just Die. please take a reality checker. Maybe you should do as many drugs as possible. That that might show you how unbelievable. But it's just like you honestly you are. It, it's like these people literally just live in an alternate reality. And here's the thing, it wouldn't bother me so much. If there weren't so many of these people, right? The yeah. fact that this the is, fact that yeah. Biden won is cause for celebration. This is another thing. Seventy that, million people voted for Trump. That's one thing I was gonna say too. Is like, like people are like, come on, you mean to tell me that more people voted for Joe Biden than Obama? It's like, yeah, yes. more people voted for Trump too. Like, yeah, it's. It, what there's do you more, mean? Like, there's more people in this country than there were ten years ago, and also more people voted this time. Like, this yeah. was a fucking historic turnout. Trump got more votes than Obama. Like, your argument is meaningless, and it it, it also yeah, it also raises a concern that that many people voted for Trump. Like, still, like, there's it's some, seventy. That is still people. a worry. Like, people forget that. Like, okay, like Trump lost. A, he is still the president for the next like month or so, and B, like two months. the people who supported him don't just disappear. Like they, you know, we but like here's the, thing. The, the fact is like these people will still try to get ahead in local politics. They'll still try to get ahead in like all kinds of facets of life. And you know, we, the fact is you're just gonna have to be smart about how you compete with them. Like, and I, I don't believe for a second in this whole. You know, let's let's reach an, a hand out to the plight and try to understand the plight of the Trump supporter bullshit. Yeah, you know, what, that, what are they like heroin addicts? Yeah, that 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 train <laughs> has left the station. I was a Trump supporter for ten years. You don't understand. I, you my don't understand. Story. I used to I used to go under the bridge <laughs> to buy MAGA hats. <laughs> and from a, <laughs> listening to they this were guy sixty dollars like a hat. A, this guy spoke. To you me. don't understand. It's at sixty dollars a hat when you're at forty hats a day. You can't even make ends meet. <laughs> it's like, but like, you, you hear this line of like, the I'm sick of hearing like the disaffected Trump supporter who is, you know, put off by the the traditional political grounds. Shut the fuck up. 
These people are just dumb. Yeah, they like just, if you're just not stupid. Listen, if you're not supporting Trump because you're a bad person and you're stu- like, then the you only are, other though. reason is no. Like what okay. I'm saying is, if it's not because you're a bad person, there's only one other reason, and it's because you're not that smart. Yeah. And that like here's the thing, like people who are not that smart aren't necessarily bad people. Like they just need to learn. But the fact is, like if you support Trump and you're you know and you're not a complete asshole. It's most likely because you're somewhat uninformed or you get most of your news from sources that convince you to, you know, be a contrarian or whatever. Yeah. And you just, uh, a lot of times I think it's just ego. I think people tend to just feel like if I just like I don't say the thing that I know is going to make people mad and stand my ground, I'll have this rush. I'll feel like. And even though I know, you know I'm wrong, I'm not going to admit it because you kind of lose part of your, like, it kind of is like. A little defeating when you know you're wrong and you're like, yeah, fuck it, all right. I mean, because you kind of get to a point also where it's like, maybe you convince you, maybe you know you're wrong at a point, but maybe you're such a good, like, you'd still be a good enough arguer that you convince yourself that you're right. Yeah. Because some people are, some of these people are great at arguing. Like George Costanza said, if you you lie, if you believe yourself, it's not a lie. <laughs> you know that so Trump supporters have been going with the George Costanza method. Yeah, they, they just. I mean, Trump's been going with the George Costanza yeah. method for the most part. He's probably like, this guy's got a lot of good points. Yeah, He's, I, mean, I gotta be an architect. I'm gonna be Art Vandalay. <laughs> I'm gonna be Art Vandalay. <laughs> I'm a latex supplier. <laughs> I work for Vandalay Industries. <laughs> we have to get all of our Trump shits out now because. You know, Eventually. this is gonna switch over to Biden shitting in like a couple oh, months. Yeah. Like, and I'm I'm excited for that because yeah. it, it's getting boring. I'm excited for the comedic landscape to shift back over to shitting somewhat on like, like just like obviously like not shitting person. on the yeah, just shitting on a normal person who's like it's funny to make fun of because yeah. it's not funny to make fun of somebody who's too ridiculous to be funny. Well, it's like, too it's like sad. It's yeah. it's sad. It's sad how many and here's another like line I've heard from these people is like, well, how could Joe Biden have won when Trump has had bigger rallies? It's like, cause his supporters are not dumbasses and they don't go to a rally in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, that makes no sense. Like that's like saying, how could the Beatles be the greatest band of all time when Blink-182 still sells out concerts? Yeah, it's it's just, like, what are you talking about? Do you, did you hear the words that came out of your mouth? Like, well, it's also like this guy throws, be- <laughs> who throws rallies in the middle of a pandemic. Do you see that art? Do you see what happened when Trump threw like a rally a few months, uh, like a few weeks before the election, and all in Omaha, Nebraska, and all his supporters got stranded there, <laughs> and they got hypothermia and had to get sent to the hospital because uh, they didn't have transportation back to their job, fucking guys. dwellings. Like, we did it for the Overlord, okay? Dude, I'm, Mr. Trump's going to take care of us. You didn't understand. Mr. Trump's <laughs> going to put all those Mexicans back, back where they belong. <laughs> They can't take. They take can't take care of our control. Of they just that. gonna send all the Mexicans back to their home country of Puerto Rico. <laughs> they can't control our corn mazes no more. <laughs> they can't control me and my daughter. We love each other, damn it. And I don't, as long as we're not faggots, we can get married to each other. Listen, I don't care if you're black, white. Those are the only two I'm okay with, actually, and only if you're the same religion. I don't care if you're white or one of the other non-proper colors. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you, ever, you ever see that meme where it's like, whether you're like black, white, yellow, or normal? No, it's like whether you're black, red, yellow, or normal. And oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like that. That's probably what they think. That's yeah. probably what they're saying, yeah. Fucking old Listen, Michael. I don't care whether you're black, red, Green, uh, the fuck other colors are there? I don't care. I don't care if two homeboys want to get married. Listen, I don't care if two fags want to do the bagabagoo or whatever down at the branch and whatever, whatever, uh, whatever it is they do. Christ hating ceremony. Listen, they whatever do. satanic rituals they're definitely gonna burn in hell for. Or that's their own none of business. my business. None of my business. I sit here. And smoke tobacco out of the hole in my neck. As they're fucking <laughs> eating a piece of tweed. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Listen, I chew a straw that has lice on it. <laughs> While I'm injecting myself <laughs> with fucking bleach. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So that's that's 
that's that, that's you know what that's the last thing I I heard from a Trump supporter yeah. when I talked to one. Well, now they're all disappearing, man. Yeah, they're all they're all see they're all found a safe space on a new social media website called Parlor. Is this a dating app? Um, it's a dating <laughs> app for retards. <laughs> it's like a, no, it's a safe space. It's like two like really like heavily Republican comedians from Long Island just like. <laughs> They just meet on they meet on parlor and do the monster it's, mash. It's Nick DiPaolo and Nicole DiPaolo. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, how you doing, sweet cheeks? <laughs> I like how you've turned uh, like Nick DiPaolo into a 1940s cup. I mean, that's what he sounds like to me. He's just like, listen, hey, yeah. he, he has that kind you of couple of like, hooligans yeah. out there. Yeah, what are you, Weisenheimer? Why don't you just be Italian? <laughs> Stay but, with um, your own people. <laughs> Uh, but no, it's it's a it's a safe space for <laughs> conspiracy theory believing racist asshole. I mean, it's basically like yeah, like I like I was literally re- like, we were reading up on it before, and it's like, you know, you go to parlor and people are like, yeah, I made a parlor and I got banned like instantly. It's like isn't that wasn't the point of it not for that? Like yeah. I thought the point was that this was a free speech engine, but no, I think apparently, it's just Twitter for Republicans. Yeah, apparently it's just Facebook slash Twitter for people who believe every single QAnon theory. Well, it's just, it's also, it, it's the same thing as Twitter. It's like, it literally stole Twitter's format of like, let's try to make tweet. one. We let's could probably make, make one. I think it's free. Hold on. Let me let's, open let's it up. Let's add all the people that we know on okay. parlor. There are so many people. And it's, here's the thing. Yo, it's, it's already on my phone. <laughs> What Tom's been secretly going on. I swear to God, right? I don't have a parlor. Tom's been parloring the shit out. No, of that I mean that means somebody in my iCloud has it. Does one of your family members have a parlor? You gotta have a secret. I don't know. Anything. All right, we're opening the app. Let's see. Okay, what is your favorite color? We have here's what we Speed got. Of Monty Python. We have red, pink, green, light, light we green, got blue, turquoise. purple, green, orange, and uh let's blue. go with blue. Because that's what they're gonna hate the most. Yeah. Like a Democratic thing. Parlor. Oh, they just made it blue. Create an account. Okay. How about uh, Karl Marx? Karl Marx. Well, I need to put an email. Oh. Okay. Jacob C. Siegel. <laughs> there we go. C. Siegel. At gmail.com. Publicly announcing Jack's email on the podcast. If you guys have any questions, you can email me at that. I'm going to get some questions. Like, can you send me a picture one. of your titties? I'm just going to do six. Twit Parlor got. Six, 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 six. No, because the they're going to send you a code. Oh, you got to use your actual number to fucking verify. Six, your one, shit. How do I know that? Mm. Uh, Parlor had like 2 million downloads. It was like the highest downloaded app in a long time. Um, I, you know. Good. All right, I'm just going to make a one time password. Let's let's get on. Let's be on the parlor. Let's, see let's try can, to let's try to get banned. Let's, let's see if we can engage in this. I want to try to get banned from this website. It's just funny how these people, all the negative stereotypes they have of liberals, that they're like a bunch of oh. crybabies who need their safe space. It's like you literally are just becoming that way. <laughs> Damn it! This is too hard. What? You can't come up with a password? Well, your screen is fucking cracked. Like, no, I got it. Control. Okay. Privacy policy, terms of service. Oh, no. Uh, J Q Q Q from QAnon. QAnon nine is a nine R D H R D as in heterosexual heterosexuals. The way God intended. Yes, R is in Republican, D is in Democrats are going to hell. All right, this is Jacob C. Siegel's All right. parlor account. All right, so people we can automatically follow. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. Uh, Sean, Sean Hannity, Hannity. Mark Levin. Oh, Devin Mark Luna. Levin, I hate that Oh, yeah, they, I hate all these people. Let's see what his parlor is like. No, I don't want to... There's Devin Nunes, say. Dinesh D'Souza. It's all like like Tucker Carlson. Oh, fucker Carlson, my least favorite. Tito Ortiz. Joe Jorgensen for president. Interesting, interesting. Let's let's tweet at Tucker Carlson saying that his uh, dad was responsible for the assassination of JFK. Yeah, I'm just gonna send. I'm just gonna. Um, I don't want to allow access to my phone. Let's. What's the most? 
I'm just gonna send this out. We have no followers. Let's see if we get banned. Okay. What's the most possibly bannable thing? Ugh. Let's say that um, 9/11 was an inside job. We can start with that. How about the Trump campaign was behind 9/11? Let yeah. Let's say tr the Trump campaign colluded with QAnon to blow up the Twin Towers. <laughs> 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 and then let's say. Um, hold on, hold on. Okay, so I have. 9-11 was an inside job perpetrated by the Trump campaign and QAnon. And also say that Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity are secret lovers that are going to burn in hell for eternity. <laughs> let's, start, let's see. To burn in hell for eternity. <laughs> for their sins. Also, Trump definitely went to Def Jeff Epstein's island. Yeah, and say that Trump, yeah, Trump molested kids at Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think we can like tweet at Sean Hannity on this fucking app. I mean, how do I? Let me see. Can I add them? <laughs> Is that how it works? I I think like like how it's literally just the same thing as Twitter. A parley is just a tweet. I know, right? It's like you guys did no effort whatsoever, put no effort into coming up. With yeah, this, this is what you call copyright infringement. All right, I've submitted the tweet. This I is just like that. <laughs> this is like that meme where it's like just copy mine but make it look a little bit different. It's just the same exact website as Twitter. Does it work? Like, do we have hashtags? Hmm. Um. Nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> 9-11 was an inside job or by the Trump hand. Let's hand try to find on. friends on Parlor and fuck with them. I know, right? Like, hold on, let me see. Who would find? They probably take your information from uh Here, let's let's find Ted Cruz. Let's tweet at can we parley at Ted Cruz? Yeah, how do you um would you like to subscribe? Would you like to follow? No. Can we tweet at these people? How do we do that? This fucking douche. It's funny to think that the Zodiac Killer just sits on TV like yeah. that. Let's... Comments. Oh, okay. Here, we can comment. Yeah, it says, like, look right here. Okay. Hold on. Let, let, let me just... Maybe I can just copy this, and I'm just going to comment it on something Ted Cruz has. <laughs> okay. Let's see if you're really all about free speech. It'll be a win-win, because if we don't get banned, then we just can spend the next few All right. weeks trolling. All right, two Ted Grews. 9-11 was an inside job perpetrated by the Trump campaign and QAnon. Tucker Carlson and Sean <laughs> Hannity are also secret lovers. <laughs> We're going to burn in hell for eternity for their sins. Also, Trump definitely went to Epstein's Island where he molested kids. <laughs> 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 I wish I was more famous, just cause, so this would show up in an article. That's the only reason I would want. Oh, only badged accounts can comment on link. What does that mean? What the fuck is that? That's bullshit. What the fuck is a badged account? It's when uh, I guess this is how they prevent people from doing exactly that. <laughs> that's so fucking retarded. You guys are pussies. Like this is a fucking oh. app for pussies. Like it is a put. It's where, dude. It's, it's this is literally... like tw if you took Twitter. Sliced its nuts off and then just showed it nine hours of Nazi propaganda. Like, that's exactly <laughs> what you do. You well, get it's just a bunch of like, it's just a bunch of retards who like are have been made to look like asses on Facebook and Twitter for the past few months, and so they're taking their ball and they're going home and they're finding we're gonna we're gonna get our own social media place. Yeah, it's like, just like you're a bunch of fucking pussies. There's Mark, no way to even like could I Mark message him like. Only verified users can create how do I verify, conversations. How like, do I verify? Yeah, is this like the blue check version of like parlor? Do like, we have to take a, a selfie or some shit to prove we're real. Yeah, I mean, dude, fuck this! Like this is this is this is so not this is so not enjoyable. I this can't is believe boring. I can't believe anybody went to this. This is sanctuary. worse than Twitter. Uh, it's because they the, they need a safe space, man. They're just a bunch of pussies. Let's find who we know on Parlor. I guarantee you we can. I, I'm just gonna type in Parlor and fucking see who we find. Let's see who the po. 
Uh, this fucking asshole, Jeff Goldman. I know. <laughs> college. Uh, Parlor is going to be awesome at Laughter for Life. Let's fucking... Laughter for Life. <laughs> Let's parley at this lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Where can we find her? This is... I'm sorry if this is boring for you guys, because we're not really talking. We're more just doing this, but I don't give a shit. Um, she's saying, fake book and Insta by... Parlor doesn't censor. Parlor doesn't censor. Parlor just censored me. Yeah, Parlor just prevented me from sending a message because it wasn't verified. Fucking classist app. Yeah, exactly. I like this. I like what Rich Retta said. He said running to Parlor and Newsmax is 2020's version of taking your ball and going home. Yeah, it's the same. That's right. Yeah. So I just said, stop copying me, fucking douchebag. <laughs> uh, All right. I, I mean, yeah, at this point, we basically like, we know that this app sucks. Yeah. All right. We can move on. Yeah, um, maybe we could just read. Like, do you? I know you like to get into fucking arguments. Do you have any good ones? <laughs> let's see if you have any good. But let's see if we have any good arguments from the Jack Vault. I have open up that Jack Siegel Vault. I don't usually get into arguments, arguments, but last last few weeks I've been really heavily into that shit. I don't know why. I've just been like, I've been a complete asshole on social media. Mm-hmm. A lot of people probably find me insufferable. It's funny though. It is funny. Um, Isn't there one? Oh, where was it? You just, you were just arguing with somebody. I saw it. Oh. Oh yeah, this guy, some guy named John Ivrone. I was like, yeah, he comments four laughing faces. It's like, is that supposed to be a point? He, well, the, he he commented ten minutes after I made the status and saying I only had one like. I'm like, that's not how Facebook works. And B also, it's like, who gives a shit? Yeah, it's like, like your what is this fucking high school? Yeah, the, the point is, there? I made you mad. Like my plan worked. Like, oh, this is great. This is a uh, my friend Sanjeev Kumar messaged me. He's a terrorist. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, shout out to terrorists. Yeah. Oh, this one I got into an argument with. So this guy goes, correction. This guy Bruce goes, correction. Left wing liars estimate bullshit. I guess he's editing your the title of the what is the title of the article you shared? Researcher estimate Trump rallies led to thirty thousand coronavirus. And Bruce cases. goes correction. Left wing liars estimate bullshit. So researchers are just left wing now. You yeah. don't have any people that research. And Ed Jack asks if you have any proof. This isn't funny though. Let's get to where I'm. Like we really rip into this guy. Yeah. Oh. I want to see something oh. he says. Oh, actually, I have a really funny fucking thing where my my fucking um oh, my s- high school teacher ripped on this guy so hard. He re- <laughs> my high school teacher, Mr. Corso, he's my favorite teacher. So what did, scroll up to what he said first. So this guy comments and oh yeah, when I said Trump is- only paid, I post all these numbers about Trump. And the one he disputed, not the fact that 26 women accused him of sexual assault. <laughs> he disputed. He's like, that's fine. But he paid more money in tax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He's like, look, all the pussy grabbing is one thing. But yeah. He didn't just pay $750. Okay. That was a filing fee. And it's just. And, and I, Jack goes, I'm curious where you got this information from. I was being nice. I, I was being really polite. And, and then. Shit. He goes down, he says, why do you guys want higher taxes? Why do you want a president that will be less tough on China? Why do you want more regulations and a lower stock market? Like, look, I won't say who this guy is, but I know that he has no huge investments in the stock market. he does not have any (laughs) stock. What the fuck is this guy investing on? He has, dude, this guy. Vampire capes, I mean. Yeah, it's like this, it's all like, stop being a sucker. Yeah. The rich people don't love you. They don't, you know what I mean? And then he ends it by saying, if you love this country, you have to vote for Trump. I love that. Two reactions, both laughing faces. So it's like, if you don't love this, if if I if you voted for anyone else or you didn't vote you for Trump or you just didn't vote at all, like you hate this country and... Yeah. It's just like, like you really believe this? What about your family members? Yeah, that right. fucking didn't do... You probably... I guarantee you, your whole family didn't vote for... Yeah, I guarantee your whole family's not so as just dumb as you for are. America. I hate this, like, I hate patriotism. It's fucking yeah. gay. <laughs> it's pretty then, gay, bro. <laughs> patriotism, come on. My friend Laguerre goes all, like, and, you know. But this, this is pretty funny what my teacher wrote. He wrote, dude, unemployment is at 10%. The stock market crashed 900 points today. 
thanks to the reduction on property tax deductions and my taxes. With his tax cut, I actually paid more. And on top of all that, I have to hear this fat, whiny twat constantly spew about how fa unfair everyone is to him while he doesn't do shit and we approach a million quarter a quarter million dead. Oh, oh shit. shit! Yo! Oh my god! Oh, shit. Oh, okay, all right, we eating up now. I want to give it right back to Steve Corso. You got it, Steve. Well, here's where it gets better. He said, seriously, either you have some kind of new stand-up routine, which is obviously a joke. He doesn't have any new stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that Steve you're doesn't trying know this out. Guy. Or you must just save a lot of money doing those do-it-yourself colonoscopies with your head rammed so far up there. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, man! Yo, he owns Balls that. Are bars, that was yo. funnier than anything this comic has ever said. It's funnier than anything most comics I've seen have said. <laughs> Either way, yeah, I love my country and I care about it, and that's why this fat fuck has to go. Boom! Boom. All right, End enough. of conversation. Of no shit. replies after that. That's right. That's how you know he won. Yeah, we won. We owned the. Yeah, we, we owned, owned the. the reps. We owned the Rebs. The Rebs. <laughs> yeah. Is that what Steve we, Corso reps? destroys Republican with facts with and fact. logic. Steve Corso <laughs> barrelingly, violently rapes Republican idiot <laughs> asshole with his big fat dick. Steve Corso's <laughs> giant dick. He, he violent. <laughs> he makes them bleed from their anal. Steve cavity. Corso's giant throbbing cock widens the assholes <laughs> of retard Trump supporters. He makes their cock cry with blood. Steve Corso's <laughs> cock cries blood <laughs> under the faces of dumbass idiot bullshit. He Fuck rams face, Trump his, supporters. He rams his <laughs> man juice down their throat. <laughs> Yo, um, shout out Steve Corso, Jack's former teacher. <laughs> yo, was, this is why he was my favorite teacher. Steven too. Corso takes he, his giant anaconda-sized <laughs> cock out of his pants, which can barely hold it. And fuck Jim Ryan and lightly the rubs him on the face. <laughs> like I just outed the guy. Yeah, uh, we was yeah. outed in between my bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, he won't listen anyway. Yeah, he's not gonna give a shit. Fuck him. Anyway, <laughs> the point is. It's good to see, like, some, you know, it's just funny when, like, you, you can finally say, like, you know, the shoes on the other foot. Oh, with the you, turntables. You, just with, yeah, with, yeah, when the turntables, <laughs> and how the, how the turntables. Um, no, yeah, no, it's true, because it's now, it's just like, well, every, that's what I was saying, every negative stereotype have, like, liberals are crying, whiny babies, and sometimes they are, I'm not going to be, you know, sometimes they are. A lot of times, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times they are. But it's just like you guys are now the snowflakes who are running to a safe space of parlor and can't handle reality. And uh, yeah, I mean it, it's just kind of like. And that's why we need to come together as a. Right. Aren't you just tired of hearing that poor shit? I mean, I just want at this point, like, I don't, I, because I don't want people who voted in Trump to die. I just no. kind of want them to like reflect, maybe, and just like maybe, like, I'm not saying they're they need to go blue, but like, just like. I don't know. Just think about the like who you were supporting, really, and like what it means. And I don't know. Really, ask yourself if you want to identify with that for the rest yeah. of your life, or if you want to like decide. Maybe I was a little unfounded. Maybe it was a weird time in American history. I think it's maybe be I weird. can leave this in the past and move on, and maybe think a little bit more, you know, maturely about who I'm voting for. Well, I think it's just like a reality check that they're going to have to face in a few months when he's no longer in office. Yeah. That it's going to be like, what do we do now? Because our whole, our whole personality and lifestyle was like about this guy. So now it's like, you lose, they're going to lose a sense of self in a way. And yeah. It's going to be It's like, going to be an ego death for a lot of people. And they're going to like have to... In the same way that like, you know, Bernie was an ego death for a lot of people. Even yeah. Even though Bernie didn't even have as much of a chance, but a lot of people highly, lot of people heavily, like, heavily identified with the Bernie life. Oh yeah, they were um, the, they were the, they were, and so like when he dropped out, a lot of them were also in that denial stage. Like, yeah. oh, no, he's going to run third party and get... Yeah, people were like, I'm going to write him in and make it even harder for Trump to lose. Like, yeah, yeah. No, and, and so it's like, it's like, what do you what do? you do? And what do we do with seven, 70 million people that just, like, 
voted for like an abomination of a human being. A lot of those people are our family and friends that we love and we respect. Yeah. And we care about. It's you know, and that's the thing. I think over the next few years, like things will change and hopefully yeah. like you know, I mean it all depends on how Biden's presidency really goes. Like if it, if it's not an anxious presidency, then things will calm down. If it becomes an anxious presidency for whatever reason, you know, whether it's Biden's fault or not, it's gonna be harder. Like, if, for example, like, if somehow we wound up at war in the next few years, even if it wasn't our fault, like, everybody would probably blame, like, Biden or whatever, probably blame, like, his leadership on mishandling it and use it as an excuse to, like... I don't know, the wartime presidents tend to do well because... They do, but they'll, like, you know, think about how they're also, like, reflected upon, like... In the past, yeah. Yeah, like, you look, at, you look at Bush, and then you also just look at, like, Reagan during the Cold War. It wasn't even really a war. And also, like, Carter during... The, Carter was a left-wing president at, uh, during, like, a, uh, like a crisis in, like... Yeah. You know, he basically showed that he During had During the no, Iran hostage crisis. Yeah, and he showed that he had no spine, like... And Bush, you know, was president during a, a terrible economy, and also... He was president during the Persian Gulf War, which a lot of people thought was a mistake going into. Yeah. Um, See, that's the thing. It's like the reason wartime presidents do well is because they have a lot of establishment bill be- pull. Because well, also they use you, the fact like, what are you going to go against your president in this time of war? What are you fucking... Yeah. Gonna do? And it's also just like, what do you not live in America? You don't live in America. Well, you don't hate America. You, can well, you don't want to shoot a brown guy in the mouth. You, you yeah. don't love America. You don't want to step on a little child's head. You don't, don't want to you you don't don't force... violently rape a 10-year-old Islamic <laughs> kid. You don't want to force a bayonet into the mother of five children in front of the... You don't love America. Uh, you love America. And if you don't love America, well then, you don't, must not love this white hood I'm wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if you don't love America, you must really hate this tiki torch. <laughs> it's like, what, what, what are these... You know what the thing is, man? I mean, I... Obviously, Biden's not running for a second term. He's gonna be like most likely. I like. I. I mean, I'm. I, I'm not joking when I say I fear that he's either gonna like pass. I hope not. I don't want him. To I die, don't know but, though. My dad made a good ooh. point, which he was saying that when people get older, their life expectancy increases as they get older. Because True. I mean, yeah. The older you get, like if you keep getting older, it gets. I guess it gets more likely that you're in good. Sh- like I saw a guy at work today. Like he came in to get some notarized. And, you know, he just looked like an old guy. He's just like, you know, he puts his shit down. He's like, I'm 94 years old. And I was like, really? Yeah. Like, I was genuinely shocked. Dude, some like, people are. Like, this dude is walking without a cane. I was like, what? Some like, people, like, they're in their 90s. They still own homes and shit. And it's surprising for me because my grandpa's 93. And he's got, like, Alzheimer's up the wazoo. Yeah. And he's just. <laughs> hey, like, he's getting up the fucking poop over there. <laughs> You know, he doesn't like know. Could you imagine f- if he just had Alzheimer's coming out of his ass? <laughs> I got Alzheimer's. His, up a- here. his asshole's just like, hey, what's your name? Like, it's funny though because he remembers me, but not my sisters. And I, I, it's not that I rub it into them every time I see them. He <laughs> like, ah, doesn't ah, know who you guys are. I don't know. You, you imagine you just played along. You, your grandpa's like, who are those ladies? You're like. I don't know. What the fuck uh, are you guys doing in my yeah. house? Like, Can you guys make some sandwiches and get the fuck out of yeah, here? Yeah, she's like, isn't it great living in 1932, Grandpa? And he's like, it is. <laughs> Sometimes my gran- when my grandma was alive, my grandpa would like smack her on the ass when she walked by and shit. Jesus Christ. I don't know why. I mean, you like, know, ah. old, old people fuck. Yeah. They forget that it's just like this they they love sex. It's really it's beds, gross, though. but like when you're old, it's like fuck it. Like I'm not fucking anything else and I'm yeah. gonna die soon. So you know, you just have a lot of really like just imagine like wet old trash fucking... bags like mushing together. <laughs> <laughs> I can just yeah, it's just like it's 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 like watching a couple of squids <laughs> hugging each other. Oh god, not, it's so it's not it's like watching like you somebody pour a bunch of like really rotten like cake batter on yeah. like a fucking uh, and it's like like cum coming out. It's just like honey being squeezed out of a uh, fucking bottle. Like it just it doesn't even squirt out. Just sort of oozes out yeah, of the tip like, of the cock. It's like <laughs> it's like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they just fall asleep on top of their spouse. Yeah, and their spouse dies of a heart attack because she can't get up. Honestly, that's not a bad way to die, though. If you're fucking and then you just come and die, like, I take it. No, but if you don't come and then die because your spouse came and passed out on top of you, that's not a okay. good way to die. Yeah, no, but if you, that's if the last thing you do is just, if I just go, 
then die? Like, I'll take it. No, I would take that, dude. You're that's dying why, on top. You that's know? why some people say no they would intended. do... That's why some people say they would do heroin when they were old. Because it's just like, right. well, the guy who doing heroin is a 89-year-old man. Yeah. I mean, it's can't be that bad. I feel like if I was high on pot, though, and I was dying, that would be that would freak me out. Yeah, you're just like, wait, 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 I'm dying? Fuck. Wait, hold on a second, though. I didn't... I didn't get to listen to, like, this song yeah, yet. Yeah, I would but, start, like, freaking out. Yeah, you're like, wait, I need to listen to my last song. And then like, you're like, you know you're what's gonna... my last TV show? And then you're like, what's my last movie? <laughs> or it's like, yeah, if you know, or, dude, the absolute biggest nightmare is, like, if you knew you were going to die in an hour and you were tripping. Oh, God. You were like, what the fuck? Like, I mean, my yeah. whole life is... I know we're, we're like you'd probably really, just kill yourself. You'd probably yeah. just want to make it quicker. You'd probably be like, I'll just do uh, it now. I'm depressing myself, let alone the listeners right now. Yeah, right. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jesus. They're like, we were all happy. You yeah, know they're like, we were having somewhat of a good time before. You now guys wait, bring, bring it all, it all the way down. Um, shit. Did, you, did you see the fucking videos of the celebrations after Pine One? Where, and, and like, uh, yeah, I thought it was kind of like, I'll blame people for being happy, but it's just also kind of like, isn't this like what he doesn't want to allow? Yeah. Like mass gatherings. Like you guys are just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's almost like they're all like, we know we're not going to be able to do this for five years. <laughs> I really hope they don't lock down again because I, I'm pretty sure the World Health Organization doesn't recommend it anymore. I have no idea. I just, I mean, I'm the masks and whatever. Like, I oh. saw that Utah, they're like, like have like a health crisis. No, there's a there, there's every single state other than New York pretty much is having serious COVID spikes. And and New York, they're already warning a, a second wave is coming. I feel like they've been warning that for a while. I mean, there was like a little second wave like in the past, like, a, like, a, like maybe a month and a half, two months ago, and then it kind of like was like, all right, I guess everyone's good. Yeah. Like, there was like a spike in Brooklyn, I remember <laughs> hearing rumors about. And now they're like saying like, all right, it's gonna like come back again. Like, we're seeing it all over the country like it's on the way here. So everyone's just kind of, I guess, really crossing their fingers hoping for not another lockdown but i i we just I like so. people people just need to wear masks like if because if, if people just don't wear masks that's gonna end. like and i'm not even saying they work like perfectly but if you don't wear masks more people are gonna get it and that's gonna incentivize locking down you know it's like, weird though like i was in a bar the other day and i walk in and i had a mask on and then like Nobody else had a mask on. Yeah, because when you're sitting, it's the dumbest rule of all it's time. It's just like what you're, when you're sitting, you can't get You COVID. take it off, it's yeah. So, it makes no sense. That's the thing about it is that that gets confusing, but it's also just like people need to live. I don't know. Yeah, I get it. I get that. I think there should be some... I think bars, like if you go into a bar, I think there certain... There should just... We should just come to an agreement where it's like certain places... Is like your own risk type of thing. Yeah. Where it's like, whatever, you don't have to wear a mask in here. Like, you know, this is a your own risk type of like. You're already poisoning thing. yourself. Like, you're already, yeah, you're already, <laughs> you're already drove here and planned to drink. Like, and, you know. And like, most you're, likely are going to drive home. Yeah, you're not going to leave your car here because I know where you live and it's like 40 miles away. Like, yeah, you're most likely like going to drive like, into a pole. You never go to like a bar. And you just, you look around and it's packed and you just know like at least 20% of these people are going to be shit-faced drunk and they're going to be driving home. Yeah, and then you just think about all the lives at risk on the road. It's like it's a, every single bar is like a potential like 15 to 20 lives at risk. Yeah, and it's because <laughs> it, it, it's like there's no way that all these people are Ubering home, but everybody in I the mean, bar is I mean, forget drunk. even driving. Like this is a fact statistically like. I don't know the number, but like almost all violent crime can be linked to like alcohol. Like, oh yeah, like this, like it's just it infects so many like negative parts of like the human like psychology but that it causes it's such a people part of to American culture. It is that's why it's so widespread that like, and the way we take part in it is not like how in Europe where they treat it like you know, like in, in with in Ireland they're all just like yeah our tolerances are through the roof. Well, because at certain at certain in certain cultures they start drinking much younger. Yeah, and they don't drink like they don't get hammered when they're young, but it's like. Like, if you're 12 years old in Italy, you can have a glass of wine for dinner. Yeah, they won't. They like, normalize yeah. it. But, like, in America, it's like, you can have nothing, and then at 21, it's like, you can have dive in, bro! And then everyone's like, yeah! And people become alcoholics by because the time it's like 22. It's, like, it's this taboo that people think, like, oh, there must be something special about it if I can't have it. But at, at Italy, it they're just true. like... No, it's just, there's no taboo. It's just like... Yeah, it's just like it's... It's just part of life, but it's like... It's something that's kind of 
dangerous, so that's why you wait. To and it's them. not that there's not drunkards in other countries. Like, there's definitely, oh, yeah. like, other countries have their boozers for sure, but it's like, Especially I think in American, the, the American society is just widespread, the party aspect of, like, alcohol, where it's yeah. like, you do it to take the edge off when you want to get laid. You do it. To take the edge off if you if you're performing, you do it to like you do it after a hard go, day at work. Yeah, after a hard day at work, take the edge. Like it's like we have this whole take the edge off thing where people just start getting bombed. Or not night even night. And if like, if like it's like if you're happy, hey, let's have a drink to celebrate. If you're sad, let's have know, a drink to tell the pain. And let's have like, like yeah. I, it's like when do we not have a drink? Like, you have a drink for every emotion. Basically, it's yeah, like, like it's like let's have a drink for work. Cold. It's like yeah, it's really nice out. Drinks. It's like dude, drink. it's freezing. Shots. Like you, yeah, no, like it's it's really shitty out. What should we do? I don't know. You want to get hammered? You want to get day drunk? We have a word. Yeah, day for drunk. Getting yeah. drunk during. We have the a word pe- when the sun is out. We have a word for normalizing a serious alcohol problem. Oh yeah. Like, do you guys like, want to engage in a seriously debilitating behavior that's gonna hurt us? Like, I know the sun is out and we have responsibilities, but do you <clears throat> want to like just get? Shit face drunk. Hey, do you want to give a it, room all day? Do you guys want to give each other a headache at eight thirty tonight? <laughs> do you want to like pass out really early and then wake up later and then just fucking like the? It's it's crazy. It's just kind of like and it, it's scary because like the just the way American culture is too. Like it's not just the booze; it's also just our big tough guy sort of yeah. thing that we have with. And a lot of that, oh, yeah, you, what are you can, a pussy? when people like, do a like, shot and they like, yeah, cough, you're like, and then they're ready to like punch somebody. Like, I hate people who get amped when they're drunk. Like anybody who's like, yo, like, fuck let's it. fucking go. Yeah, you know the shot. It's like, dude, fuck get, yeah, get, bro. get that guy the fuck away from me. Like, yeah. If you're, if you're that guy, I will never have a drink with you. I'll never do any drug with you if you're that guy. Like, and they do that. I, I knew guys that were like bros that did that shit with pot in high school when you would take a bong. And you would be like the the sm- and you would be like smoking it, and be like go 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 yeah motherfucker that's how we clear the bomb. <laughs> like dude, what are you doing? Yeah. We're in a we're in a parking lot behind a bowling alley yeah. right now. <laughs> like, I mean, to be fair, that in the beginning, weed is very like it's so fun cool. when you're starting off, like just like. Because you know when you when you're early on, like it takes like nothing for you to get high. Yeah. So just like I've seen people get like like literally like like retarded off of just clearing the bong. Yeah. And that was fun like when you're in high school and you you know, someone hits the bong and they're like uh uh-huh, and there's like a bunch of smoke left. It's like yo who wants to clear it? And then it's someone like, like someone who like barely smokes like is like yo clear it and then he clears it and he gets mad high. It's like yo like yo, we're it was all fun. So fucking high. <laughs> but that's also just like weed is just there's something more like I mean, that's silly too, but there's also something more like childish and innocent about that because yeah. that's a bunch of 15 year olds at the baseball park, like at night. It's not like a bunch of 37 year olds who hate their wives, like yeah. in a bar in like East, East fucking Flatbush or something like that. And just, there's nothing worth doing. I, I remember when my. I meant to say East Meadow because it was going to sound more pathetic. East, East, East Flatbush. Because East Flatbush is like. Is that a real place? That's, that's, I'm pretty sure it's Brooklyn. I know there's Flatbush. Okay. Oh yeah, I, mean, I don't East know Flatbush. Those. Okay. I mean East Flatbush, and you know I don't know much about it, but East Meadow, Long Island is more depressing than what I was going yeah. for. So East Flatbush sounds like a <laughs> pretty sure it's like the ghetto vagina. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I've got the Flatbush. She's got, got the, the East Flatbush. That's that's when an she's Asian, got the clap. <laughs> that's when an Asian woman doesn't like, shave their vaginas. <laughs> the East Flatbush. It's the East Flatbush. <laughs> <laughs> no, is, you know what's douchey though? Are those like. Those old, like, those guys are like, like not old, but they're like late thirties or whatever, and they're hanging out with like really young people. I I used to have this douchebag neighbor named Matt Accardi, and one time my sister had her like high school graduation party, and this guy, I, it was like twelve o'clock at night. This guy comes to our backyard with his shirt off. And like his what? douchebag friends, he's like, "Yo, what's up, bro? You guys ready to fucking drink?" Oh, and they're the no. biggest fucking oh. turds on the planet. It's like a movie. That's like a movie from like nineteen ninety eight. It's like, yeah. oh, here comes, <laughs> here it's comes like, the douchebag. Like, oh, dude, look what just walked in. 
And then it's like you just see that character with sunglasses on, and it's like, oh, Blake. And a blazer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, fucking Hunter. Brad's here. And, and, and it's like. What's up, babes? <laughs> yo, yo, what's up? And he was like hitting on like newly graduated high schoolers. And I was like, I was like 14 at the time. And even then, I was just thinking, what an. What a douchebag. Yeah, like, right, what a like, just fucking turd of a human being. just this guy like, ugh. Ugh, God. And it, it's just, some people you just get into jesting when you look at them. You're like... <laughs> they're just... Some people, like, give off serious douche chills just from, like, the first time you speak to them. And you're like, ooh, ugh, I don't... I can't take this anymore. Yeah. I mean, it really... Anybody, anybody who's, like, super into themselves. Like, oh, yeah. Right, right off the bat, like... Oversharing is kind of douchey to me. Like right in the beginning, like when you overshare. What do you mean? Over- like, like when you just like, yeah, I met you, and like we're already like thirty years into your life story. Oh yeah, like, they like, just bro, start like, like going into that shit. Like it's just like, hey, wait. nice to meet you. It's like nice to meet you, man. Like I have a wife. Like you know, she's right over there. Yeah, I just bought a car. It's really sick. Like come outside. Like like, dude, do you see that? It's like, oh god. Where they start talking about like. Their problems right away, and it's like yeah. that's for close friends. I yeah, wanna... oh, yeah, people are like, dude, man, you don't understand. Like, I got a sexual assault charge. It's like, whoa, man, like, I don't want to hear that. I shit. actually didn't even engage you. <laughs> yeah, we just you were just sitting at the bar. You're like, no, we didn't meet. We didn't hey, say hi. Like, like, hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. But can you please leave? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's how that song should really just yeah, go. Yeah, right. Like, hey, I just met you, and I'm uncomfortable. We're and I'm uncomfortable. This, so we're going to have to end this And now. some people do that. When they get drunker, and they'll also start telling you their life story. See, I, I feel like, in general, I'm, I'm a very approachable <laughs> guy, like, in real life. So, for some reason, people just feel comfortable just opening up to me, even when I don't want that. And they'll just start, like, <laughs> telling me shit about their lives. And I'm like... Okay. Yeah. I mean, I have that at work too a lot. Like sometimes yeah. I'll be working and like people will be telling me their problems and like people will be like, "Yeah, we don't know if he's gonna make it overnight." And I'm just like, "Where's the fucking stabler?" I'm yeah. sorry. What were you saying? Like, and you're just like <laughs> pretending to listen. Like, uh-huh. you're like, I know it's so fucked up, yeah. man. God, like, and that's it's just like people that are just normal guys. Like, they'll just start talking to you for a long time. I when me and uh, Devin Janini were at like that roast last time that woman who like kicked all the people out of jj's tavern just went to us and she just started telling us all about her like she's like yeah i'm dating a this black guy but my brother hates him because he's racist and she just like went off for like 30 minutes oh and we were just like Hmm. Trying to think of a way to get out of there. No, we weren't even at that point. I was just like, "This is kind of funny." <laughs> and I, and like, a, like I'm like, "Wow, this is amazing that this person is telling me this stuff right now." Like, <laughs> I, I didn't ask about any of this. Yeah, you're like, I didn't even like know I was gonna get like anything close to this information tonight. Yeah, like, it just, it's just like that seriousness that comes like right off the bat. Sometimes it's nice, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like sometimes <laughs> it's like if you're talking to a, a woman that you like. Or, like, uh, they are attracted to. I like how that's different. It's yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> Look, if you're done, there's a difference between a woman you want to fuck and a woman you like. Because <laughs> yeah, there are women who, you, there are women who you, you just fucking hate and their personalities are just garbage. But you would fuck them. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sorry for women, it's the same thing with guys, you know? Yeah, that's like, you see that guy, you're like, I never in a million years, like, touch that man. But, like, he seems like he probably is fucks like you know what yeah, i mean like because like, you can't deny like i've met women where i'm like that woman's a giant cunt like i wouldn't date her because of how much of a cunt she is and she's but, just stupid but i mean those tits like you know what i mean like <laughs> i want to hate fuck her i want to <laughs> beat her up with my hate, penis hate fucking is such a weird like you're like, concept. why are you such an asshole? It's like, ugh, ugh fuck you. It's like, yeah, you want to fuck me? It's like, yeah, I do. It's like, I hate you, though. It's like, yeah, me too, but this is good. But I'm but fucking angry. I'm right? angry I'm because I hate you, but I'm enjoying this. It's like, <laughs> me too, but I also hate you because we have a really weird relationship at work. And then it's just like, why are you guys doing this in the office? We can all hear you. And like, yeah. everyone just comes in. Shut the fuck up, Dennis, and get back to work. <laughs> yeah, we're hate fucking in the <laughs> fucking conference room. But, like, sometimes if you're talking to a girl, like, I, I was talking to this girl once, and, like, out of the blue, she was just, like, you know, I was an orphan. And I'm, like, oh, okay. And, like, I was, like, I'm glad that we don't talk about bullshit right away. Because sometimes, because that's boring if <laughs> yeah. you're just, like, so, what do you do? I don't care. I fucking know. You work at a... Yeah, it's, like, so, you watch 
shows. Like, <laughs> it's just like, do you watch shows? Do you like? It's funny when you get to those, those that like that first like dead skin level of small talk. Oh yeah, where you're literally just asking people that you know the quest the answer to the question is yes. Like, like human like, comparison. Yeah, just like, do you like music? Like, it's either no, like I fucking hate. Yeah, it. it's like no, like I've never heard it. Like you know, what's like, some what music? <laughs> like wait, moo moo. How do you say that word? Uh, can, please show me this. Or you're just trying so to find wait, some sort people of people make sounds. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, you know, that's a well. It's just like you're trying to find a connection, and it's funny when it, when you can't find a connection. So you're like, all right, well I tried. Like yeah, you're right, just like you're just so like, so like. Did you watch the Yankees? And we're like they're like. <laughs> Like they're like I don't I don't I don't really care. And like okay. Yeah, they're, 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 like so you'll just be like so. I mean, Super Bowl, right? They're like I'm not a sports fan. It's like oh, yeah. um, you know, the, did you hear about the Joker? Like it was a crazy, crazy movie, right? It's like yeah, I don't really like we'll go to the movies. I'm like all uh, right, so okay, uh, do you like just staring you, at the ground? <laughs> yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, uh, how about that air that we yo, breathe? yo, <laughs> that paint over there, like it's drying, like we trying to like pop a squat, like dude, I I was talking to like my sister's boyfriend's a nice guy, right? But like when I first met him, I was just like this guy, he's just kind of like like I was trying to like she left us. You may alone. hear this. True. <laughs> like, I hope not. I'll back you up, bro. He's a nice guy. I like him. But like when I first met him, it was awkward at first. Like I don't know why he was just kind of. She like left us alone to go to the bathroom, and it was one of those moments where I was like, "So." Uh, it's totally right? weird with someone who's dating someone you relate. Like mm-hmm. even if it's not your sister, like with your sister, it's especially weird because it, you you're just standing there and you're like, "So like." You have sex with my sister, I yeah. guess, and I'm I like, just, you kind of I just kind of stand me. here and accept it. Yeah. And it's cool, right? Like, you know, it's like, what do you like? Because there's no, you, you're not. There's no real reason, but you'd have a problem with it. No, I, yeah, but it's, it's and, like, and it, especially if it's just guy weird. Like, but it's also just like a weird moment where you're both like, you don't really know each other, but you've been you're alone for the first time. Yeah, and you're just like forced to like actually like meet each other as yeah. as just like dudes so I'm just and like, you're just like kind of yes yeah, man like she yeah, like like she'll like she'll be like i'm going to the bathroom it's like all right and then he's like yeah she takes forever and you're like ha, 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 yeah i remember yeah. from when we were growing up and he's like yeah and you're like uh, yeah i used to live in uh massapequa he's like oh really it's like yeah we, yeah and it's just it's just so flat and pointless yeah. It's just and like, it's just painful. That's dude, the problem. Dude, I, I made the most awkward thing that they still remind me of. Like, I was like, what do you, what do, you do for work? And he was like, I work, a, I don't know, some fucking boring job that I, you know. And I was like, oh, that sounds stable. That's what I fucking <laughs> said. And I, I, I had nothing else that to add. That sounds stable. It's like I had nothing else to it's add. It's like, say, he's like, yeah, well, I had this job. And you're like, yeah, you did. You have a job. That's right. You did have that. You get paid money to do something. That's interesting. But it's just like, that's all I could think of. I was like, oh. Usually okay. one of the, and that's why a lot of times usually one of the first things anyone relates to these days is like, bro, like, do you smoke weed? Yeah. Because then it's like, yeah. And it's like, bro, like, because yeah. then start, like, that's like something that not everyone is going to say yes right. to. And then if they say then, no. Then, then you're like, kind of oh, like, okay. then they're kind of like, yeah, not really. And, and then they might be like, oh, but I don't really care about it. It's like, oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm high right now. Yeah. Cause nobody's mm-hmm. going to be like, nobody's going to say like, no. And I think it's wrong. And yeah, nobody's going to be like, no. And quite frankly, if you do, I don't consider you a human being. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it's get, a good thing. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> fucking <laughs> weed for pussies. Boy, well, I was just asking to make sure you were good. Yeah, <laughs> Cause if you do smoke weed, I was about to pound yeah, you. Yeah. I was going to beat you up. Right. Uh, but it's just like, that's why I hate, I don't like asking people what they do for work. Cause it's like, unless you have a job, I like it when you ask somebody and they're like, I'm a, a firefighter or like a, a doctor or something. Cause it's like, I, I know what you do. Like I can picture you at work doing yeah. your job. But if they're like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a technical analyst for a data mining company. I'm like, what's so you say you sit at a desk? Like, yeah. yeah it's that's like all you're on a computer all day. I like, also think the work question is tough because I find most people don't like talking about work. Like, yeah. I, know I don't like people are like, how is work? I'm like, I was at work. Like it, it's, it sucked, but I made money. Like, what yeah. do you want from me? Like, and people will be like, what do you do for work? And I'm just like, like I work at 
you and know, even they don't like, give a shit either. They're just asking to be polite. Yeah, and but then it's like I'm gonna be like, what do you do? And then I don't care about their response. It's just, it's just like it's a like, pointless. Ah, you know what it is? It's like a pointless obligatory bullshit. Then yeah. there's no real. You both feel like it's almost like everybody ask, runs around with like a, like it's almost like everyone runs around with like yeah like or just like everyone runs around with a ball and like you just have to pass it back and forth for like a few minutes before you can actually talk. Like yeah, and it's just like it's like a it's like a checklist of things that you have to ask. And it's it just like, it's so stupid. Because it's just, yeah, it's almost, and it's they're not even like a blame to you. Just your brain doesn't know how else to fucking meet this person. Like, how do yeah. I get in? Like, how there's all I these, get- like, the layers of bullshit <laughs> on the outside. The weather, the job, the music, the shows, See, I whatever, wanna like, 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 I want to start having, like, a, like, I want to start, next time I meet somebody, I just want to get to, like, a fucking, like, an interesting conversation, like, right away. Yeah, just be like, you know, Bush did 9-11. And then they're like, dude. <laughs> Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, if my sister's instant next, best friends. If my sister's next boyfriend is like that, I'm like, all right, you got my approval. Yeah, he's like, all right, bro, <laughs> go at it right in front of me now. I don't care. Strip. But you know what's the worst thing? Because we're at that age now. We're in our mid twenties. Is like when you're at a bar and you have like some old person that you not like an old person, but like somebody you knew from back in the day, say like from high school, and they're like Tom, and you're just like. Yeah, you're like, that because you don't even like this person. Just I, I don't care that you exist. Yeah, sometimes it's like it's like you, especially when you look at them for a sec and they've changed. So you're like, who the fuck is that? Yeah, and, and they're like, like, dude, and you're like, and they're like, now they're like hugging up on you, and you still don't know who they are. And you're I'm, like, it's uh, David. You're like, from- dude. Yeah, right. It's like Mike from. Algebra, and it's oh, like, yeah. yeah, and you're like, wow, and then they're like, how you been? And you're like, yeah, I graduated high school, like, yeah. and it's just like, dude, we didn't talk when we were in high school, and we it's also even like, friends then. even if we did, we were 16, our brains weren't fully developed, none yeah. of the conversations mattered, like, we were only friends because we lived in the same zip code, but like, once yeah. we left high school, like, we like, we just moved on with our lives. Yeah. Some people never move on from high school. Though. I know, Some people yeah. are fucking weird about yeah. that shit. Some people, like, live in the same town their whole lives, hang out with their high school friends, like, forever. Forever. And then they make their families he- in those towns, and then they their families do the same thing. Like, Comac is a lot like that, and that's part of the reason I want to get out of there is because it's like, that you just see these families that have been there for generations. Yeah. And it's like, part of you is like, well, that's kind of cool. But then another part of you is like, I don't want that. Like, I don't want to just wind up another like seed planted yeah. here. Like another fucking like how, like another little pink house. Like, I mean, my sister and her husband live in the same town, but like they have like friends from other aspects of life and they didn't just like right. stay in fucking And they may not live there forever. I yeah. Mean, your and sister, just, like your sister's not that old, right? No, but it's yeah. like, they, they, they weren't, like, stuck in high school. Like, some people, they'll, like, always reminisce. And it's like, you could tell, like, you didn't really do anything after Some people, I can tell, especially with people who say they, like... Some people didn't go to college and they don't... And that's why they reminisce high school. And yeah, I get that. that. Was, like, the peak and that was, real Because that was it. Like, you graduated yeah. high school and, like, you might have partied more, but then you were just working guy. But, like... <laughs> You can tell when people say they hated college that, like, you know, they either just, like, didn't really, like, do well Mm -hmm. because they didn't care or, you know, they just peaked in high school. That was, like, their favorite time and they never really Because they were cool then. And it was easier. Like, college is kind of tough. It's, like, you could still be that guy and not give a fuck, but, like, you start, yeah, you start to have things where it's, like, actually nobody, like, everyone here is on their shit. Like, yeah, you have to be an adult now. Yeah, like, that's, that's tough. I knew this one guy who was like, uh, he was like the class clown in high school, and he was a cool dude. Like we were, I was friends with him, and he was like one of the popular kids. Like he would always get invited to the parties and shit. Yeah. And I saw him years later, and he was working at Seven Eleven, and he was like, I never took life seriously. Like I was just like, he even said like I was the I was the class clown, the party animal in high school. Like I'd always get into trouble and always like fuck around and pull pranks and shit. And like, yeah. Now look at me. <laughs> I know it's like now I uh, work until four a.m. like every yeah, night. I'm like, like Jesus, man. I think it's just sad because there's no reason you should want to have fun when you're a young kid. But like, oh yeah, I, I think it's like when people get older, 
But I think a lot of it also has to do with drugs, like people who like, get into up. drugs. Like it's harder to grow up when you spend like those developmental years really fucking up your brain. Like, and also just you know, drugs are fun though. That's the thing. And, yeah, they are. It's hard, it's hard to because they it's are like, very fun. It's just like drugs are like they're they're fun to do, and it's like it's something to look forward to, especially like if you don't enjoy high school. I mean, most yeah, I hated don't. school, but I, I hated I, high school. I didn't smoke weed for most of high school though, but I did drink. Yeah. But I also was not like a party animal. Yeah. I would escape in other ways. Everyone escapes in certain ways, but I also think it's like also just like you know. The gratification of school, like the passing of the test, the the big like dance night or like yeah. the big prom or the big it's event coming. you're getting, you just get patted on the back for years, like years of just getting patted on the back for stuff that's really? categorically not that hard. Yeah. And then like, I mean, high school work can be difficult, but it's like compared to like some shit that people do just for a work day, it's nothing. Oh yeah. I mean- and then like you go to like, you grow up. And then, you know, you do your job and people are just, it's like that Louis bit where people are just like, yeah, do your job, asshole. Like, like nobody cares. Like, you're it's not going to get special privileges. You're not going to get a good for you anymore. You don't get a grade. Like, Well, that's why I think, that's why I think about like sweet 16s. It's people throw sweet 16s and it's like, what do you, I, I used to work at a catering hall and they would have a sweet 16 and the, and what would happen was the, the, they would be like, oh my God, you're amazing. The, the girl would wear like a tiara and everybody would like suck her dick. Like, <laughs> everyone give her blow her real hard on the knob. Well, everyone will give her all these presents and be like, "You're so amazing," and it, and just have this ginormous, expensive party for not dying for sixteen years. It's like that's yeah. pretty fucking easy to do. Why? It's just kind of yeah. Like I mean, it's weird to celebrate those milestones that mean almost nothing. Yeah, and then get older and work tirelessly to achieve things. And everyone just kind of like, yeah, good job. Yeah. Like, you know, nobody's really See you like, tomorrow. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Uh, and also, you, you I owe hope me it's th- not cold, right? And mm-hmm. also, you owe me those, uh, that shit from the other day. Yeah, right. It's like, yeah, dude, that was great work. So you're going to catch up me up on those spreadsheets, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, yes, yes, I'm going to do that oh, yeah, and, they, and then it's like the prom king and queen. They just get these people. I think, like, a lot of young people just have, like, this these inflated egos because... They've been constantly complimented their entire lives, and they never really had to like struggle to do shit. I mean, yes, youth there is struggles. It's it's not you know easy. We all have shit that we had to deal with when we were younger, um, and there are times when you when you genuinely accomplish something that you feel good about yourself, and you know, yeah, um, fucking. But like overall, it, it's it, it really doesn't require much work. So I think people miss that and they grow up and they realize like, and also when you're young, like really young people treat you as like special. And like when you get older, special ed. Ah, you bunch of retards. <laughs> people just treat you like you're retarded. <laughs> Good job, buddy. <laughs> hey, that was great. Okay, slow, slow, slow. <laughs> I did good for you, didn't I? <laughs> that was great, great, great drawing, right? <laughs> that was excellent. You, you you even colored within the lines. This time. <laughs> yeah, and you actually drew on the paper. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't eat the drawing this yeah. time. <laughs> and you didn't pull down your pants and shit on the desk <laughs> but like that, like when you get older people start to just not care because everyone just you. like people are just like yeah well i do all my shit too like yeah and there's no Who like gives a shit? when you're a kid and like you know most kids are just used to having fun i think the reason you gratify those achievements is because you want kids to be like conditioned to want to do those things yeah because when you're an adult and you, you realize want to do by the yeah shit. by the time you don't realize you don't want to do them, and by the time you're already conditioned to work hard of them, you know work hard on that stuff, and then you wait you go for that gratification and it's nothing. Yeah, it's already too late. You're conditioned to keep doing it already. Like you're just you know like, what well, I, mean? I have like, to fucking do this. Yeah, now. it's like oh well, no one cares, but I still I'm gonna keep tirelessly doing it every hour of every day. Well, it's also when you learn, a lot of people learn through the consequences. Either they'll fail out or they'll get fired or something will happen to them where they'll realize like, oh, I can't fuck around. Because now, now there are actually, there are consequences for my actions. And honestly, I know, I knew more people um, that peaked in college than they did in high school. 
Like, yeah, I, college I was, is a dangerous peak, peak oh, time. Oh, yeah, because, dude, I, I knew this. I was in a fraternity, and we knew this one fraternity called Sci-Fi, and there was this brother there who is, like, like 38 years old, and he still is an active member, oh, and he God. would go to all the parties Ugh. and just be like, yeah, bro. I'm like, dude, like, other people are have, like, like wives this is and- our like time to be this age, yeah. bro. Like, Other people have like wives and kids and jobs and secretaries and shit. Yeah, like, right. Like, Other people have like mail four hundred one ks and shit. And like you, dude, what are you doing yeah, with your like, life, bro? Like, I mean, and like the thing is, like those kids don't see that. They, and they're like, like, I just fucked this girl. I'm like, she's old enough to be your daughter. Yeah, and you're like, 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 what do you really get out of that? Yeah, it's like oh my! I went eh, like oh, good for you, buddy. You're still like, a loser. How's that? Do, 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 are you gonna be able to care for your dying parents <laughs> in the next ten years? Like, like uh, have you even started a retirement fund savings for yourself? Like, what are you what are you doing with yourself? Yeah. It's just like, and it, I think a lot of it is because that time is like a really fucking fun time. Yeah. I mean, like college. I always, t- whenever I go up, you know, I'm always like, fucking college is great. Everybody says the same thing, like, because you can literally just be completely irresponsible. Yeah. And, like, you don't have any real obligations. It's a fake real life where you, oh, get, to act fi- like a, you exactly. get to act like a badass for a little. You like, get to stay up and fucking party your ass off all night. You get to, like, ride your bike down the street with a joint in your mouth. And, like, you get to just, like, you just go to class high and pass and, like... Then you could just do keg stands and like people will be like, oh, oh like, like as as we're talking about this right now, I'm getting like a little nostalgia. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, right? I, it's I, like I'm, I'm literally thinking. I mean, about, think, I'm thinking now about University of Florida. Oh man, like don't that, you miss that time? Yeah. That that was so much fun. Fuck, did I peak in college? Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, but college was dope. College, Fuck, I might have peaked in college. It I'm was so you, great. I'm sorry for the listeners if you didn't go to college. You didn't miss out. Yeah, much. I mean, yeah, you didn't. It wasn't that great. I just had the most fun of four my years of my entire life. And that's honestly one of the reasons I want to move to New York City with you and people is because it's just like I want to relive that experience. Yeah, <laughs> just like, exactly. I mean, to be fair, and, and we're at 91 minutes now, so we should wrap this up. But to be fair, these days it'll be a little more grimy. But yes, it'll be. Yeah, it's hopefully. just it, no. It's true. It just yeah. It, it there's like an innocence to it when you're in college because it's like you don't have to do shit at the moment. And you're yeah. At the moment, you're good. Like at the moment, there's like a safety. And you have the dining you. halls. Like yeah. you just have people make food for you every day. And people also just like you're just young, so like you can get away with stuff. Yeah, like they you don't, don't look you to do like if you get caught smoking weed somewhere that you're not supposed to be. Like someone's gonna be like, all right, here's a couple of kids. Like they're in college. Like come on, here's a but like if you get caught smoking weed as an ugly thirty eight year old with like a beard, like what on a part, it's like dude, like. You should not be here. Like, yeah. <laughs> like the cop, the cop just sits down and gives you life advice. Yeah, right. He's just like, like, buddy, like I'm not even gonna rest. Just it's, sit down. This man. is too it's, sad. And to he just like, he, like the cop just looks in your eyes. He's like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, what are you? What are you doing? doing? And he, and then he's like, what? He's like, what are you doing? Like, look around. He's like, I don't know, man. Just... He's like, you're creeping out all the kids that should be here smoking. He's like, you're creeping me out. Yeah. He's like, there's. He's like, normally I'd have to arrest five 15 year olds. There's no 15 year olds here because they're you're fucking here. freaked out. I you. would rather have to arrest kids. Like, they're, it's just like, yeah. When I got caught last year smoking pot, the the cop ultimately let me go. He was just like, just throw the weed out, you know. I was yeah. Like, all right. But he was just like, dude. You're 26 years old. Like you're too old for this shit to be happening anymore. And I'm like, you're right. Like I don't. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, you're absolutely right. And when you put like, that, when you put 26 isn't terrible, but when you put that on paper, like to be still getting like arrested for this shit, yeah, it's, it's like, just like, yeah. come on, man. I mean, it's kind of like because I used to go to like the psych center, you know. Yeah. And I think the last time I went there, I was like, I, I was probably like early 23. 
And I had fun, but we wound up like, yeah, as usual, like the cops wound up coming and we had to like sketch out our way out of there. Yeah. And the whole time I was just like, why am I still doing why? this? Like, well, it's cause it's and I wasn't, room. I'm not even that old, but I'm just like, dude, I'm like, I'm 23 years old. Like, why am I like, in a, why am I breathing asbestos willingly well, and like yeah. running from police? Like, this is so stupid. Like, I think it's cause it's, it's the rush of doing something that's illegal. Cause it's like when you're young, like you said, you smoke weed. It's like, oh, we got to find a place to smoke weed and we got to be all secretive. But when you're our age... Yeah, right. You kinda, like, it's like the chosen ones kind of thing. It's like the chosen ones who get to go to the spot. And yeah, like, we're in we're in the secret place and we're smoking. We sneak. There's like a little path, you know, and it's like, here's my spot. And here's everyone's like, dope yeah. spot. Like, but when, when you're older, it's like, yeah, I'm going to the basement to get high. Then <laughs> yeah, right. And it's like, I'm just going to go sit in my car for 45 minutes. Yeah, like, and it's just like... Like, as if I were like... Cause the, like if I were to go to like Wix Park and smoke, yeah, right now I would feel so weird. It's just like we're too. It's old. just like I'm standing in the woods. Yeah, I'm am I gonna be 25 in less than six months. Like, yeah. and it's also like when like our both our parents know we smoke weed. They, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, that also know? makes it like is like when your mom just like oh, you know you like you just rolls your eyes at you because you stink. Yeah, and it's not even like mad at her kid anymore. It's just like it's annoying. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, like you smell like weed again, like, and you're 24. Like, you know, like, I'd like smoking pot. And I'm like, yeah, 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 it's just, it's different. But, you know, as a drug addict, I'll stand by it. I like weed. Yep. And on that note, I think it's uh, time to say good night. Good night, y'all. I remember. Good night to Trump. Remember. Good night to the movement. podcast. Orange loves you just the way you are. Yep. One in a million. Good night to Trump and his shit ass presidency. Hopefully he doesn't fuck everything up in the next month and a half. It'll be over soon. Hopefully. All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Have with a good night. Guest. Yep, with our next guest. Who's it gonna be? We we don't really know yet either. I was just gonna I thought we were just